Hey guys, so I wanted to put this video together just for you guys. This is for my Facebook group, uh, The Mom Photographers. Um, the pros and cons of the Sony a7 II. Uh, we, had, we had this camera just for about a little over a month now and I wanted enough time to, to use it, you know, play around with it, to get a good feel for it before I put up a review. And um, there are lots of reviews online on YouTube that, that you can search for, but I think a lot of them just... Um, I don't want to say they oversell it, but they talk a lot about the pros and kind of skip through the cons, you know. Why did we get this camera? Why did we buy this camera? Really, we, we just wanted something smaller as a travel camera. We already have uh, some pretty beefy DSLRs, but, you know, taking that with us wherever we, we go, like scouting or when we're just on a trip to visit family and friends, it's sometimes too too much to, to lug around, you know, the big lenses and everything. Um, so we wanted something small and compact. And this is a good segue into, I have a list right here, the pros and cons of the Sony a7 II, unbiased. My number one pro is the size and weight, just like I was saying before. Compared to DSLRs, it's very, I mean, it's, it's small, you know, let me, let me pull up. I mean, this is our this is the D six hundred right on a standard uh, fifty millimeter lens that we would typically use, and this is um, the size of it. We we like uh, the size and the weight of this, you know, strapped to our neck or our shoulders. You know, it, it doesn't scream big old DSLR when you're out traveling. So, size and weight is the number one pro I think for this camera. Number two is the sensor. Sony makes amazing sensors. There's so much pull that you can do. You can uh, underexpose certain shots and you can pull, you know, two to three, four stops. And it still, still comes out very nice, very clean. Number three, the pro is the, the five axis steady shot. Um, it's nice because when you have a longer lens, and especially if you're just, you know, handheld, it, you know, you can really see the telephoto uh, shake. You know, it's kind of like that when you're viewing through the viewfinder. But when you turn it on, it really helps it. And another great feature of the steady shot is that I can shoot at a shutter speed that I typically would not even think about shooting for DSLR. I can go down to 140th, 150th easily handheld and not worry so much about, oh, am I going to get the, the motion blur? So usually with the DSLRs, um, typically, you know, I'll stay around 200, I'll try to stay at 200th of, of a second, and it'll come down a little bit depending on how creative I want to get. So the steady shot is good, but the steady shot is not a savior, and I'll go through that a little bit in the cons. Number four is video features. Probably, maybe I should have listed that higher because what this camera does for video features, it does a lot more than typical DSLRs do. Um, and, I, and I'll put some footage for you to see the, the difference. The transition, the focus transition from trying to acquire it and then actually acquiring it is so smooth. And it is silent, like super silent. Typically when you're on a DSLR and it's an autofocus, you can hear it hunt on your microphone. Even if you have uh, the microphone plugged in and farther away from your body, it is still going to, you're going to hear that, the gear, the, the focus motor going. This is, right now, the D4S, Nikon's flagship, Nikon's best camera. This is how the autofocus works on it. You can see it. You hear it? You can hear the, the focus motor going. Watch. Yeah, and, and I have an external mic plug too. I mean, I'm plugged directly into the camera, but you can still hear it. And not only that, not only can you hear the focus motor going, but 
it jumps. So instead of just slowly going and acquiring the focus, it actually goes zoop, 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 and then comes back to the middle. But with the Sony, oh man, this thing's this thing's amazing because it just it just goes slowly from here and then just slowly fades in and then acquires it, and you're good. And that that's a great feature for us because you know we want to do more video blogs now. We want to do a lot more candid videos, and we want to use the autofocus because I know the pros, and we're definitely not pro videographers. But the pros, they, they all go manual, right? And that's probably the, the right thing to do. But when you just want to take casual videos, you know, I, I don't, I can't go manual because I'm trying to do selfie of the two of us like that. Or I just want to walk around and, and casually take things. You know, I don't want to add on follow focuses. I don't want to add on more equipment to make it bigger than it needs to be. So um, the focus transition on this is, super nice and you know and it's autofocus and it's super silent another thing about the video feature is the auto ISO now not every camera has it uh, the D600 does not have the smooth auto ISO transition but our D4S does uh, what I'm saying is that when you go from let's say a dark scene say outdoors and then you walk indoors um, Generally, outdoors is going to be super bright and indoors is going to be super dark. But with the auto ISO transition, this one is just seamless. Similar to the way the smooth transition of the focus. Inside, outside. See how smooth that was? Outside. I turned the auto ISO off, so now it's base 200 ISO, just so that you guys can see how dark it really is inside. Yeah, that's being H down there. These are the plants that we're looking at. Let me turn the ISO back to auto. See that transition? It's amazing how smooth they made it. Number five, pros. You can use old legacy lenses. And that's one, you know, not just this Sony, but you know, all the mirrorless essentially because it's all about the distance between the sensor and the back of the lens, right? And these being so tiny, you can adapt, and you'll need adapters. You can adapt old lenses, current lenses, almost almost all the lenses that are out there to fit onto this so that um, you don't have to spend thousands of dollars on lenses because these lenses aren't cheap um, I actually have let me grab this this is actually a 58 millimeter 1.4 lens and you can see let me take apart the adapter here so this is the lens by itself right here and pretty small but the adapter is almost the same size so with the old legacy lenses everything turns to manual but the manual focus on this is nice because there's this thing called the focus assist and you turn it on it's kind of like a, a magnifier because this is all electronic uh, electronic viewfinder the, the back LCD is electronic of course when you turn on that button it, it brings up another screen and essentially gets a zoomed up view of what the sensor is seeing and you can fine tune the the manual focus to exactly where you need it and, and that does wonders you know what I mean you just can s sort of do that on DSLRs if you put onto live view mode and then do the manual focus in there but then you'd have to like jump into live view mode and jump back out back into regular mode but with this a little more seamless you just hit a button uh, it zooms in and then you grab your focus. Is it recording? Yes, it is. Okay, so talking about the manual focus again. Uh, I said the focus assist helps, definitely helps. There's also another feature called uh, focus peaking. 
and it's a nice feature but it's not a hundred percent accurate and I'll go through that with some of the cons but it's nice that it shows you what's in focus and you can choose a color yellow color or red color you can get a visual cue of a quick visual cue of what's in focus and what's not in focus um, so that's a nice feature but it still needs improvement I think another pro is having the Wi-Fi NSC so this has Wi-Fi built in and you know you can link it up to your cell phone and then you can control it through that you know hit exposures uh, I mean snap the shutter and stuff like that uh, another good thing is the NFC so you can just tap your cell phone right next to it and quickly transfer the picture that you just took from the camera without too much fuss uh, so that's pretty nice and that's a definitely a great feature that a lot of the cameras are starting to get but not all of them have NFC yet. I think most of them will start to get Wi-Fi but having NFC is nice um, now number seven a pro is a, the tilt screen the tilt screen is, is man that it is nice because you know I'm about you know 510 511 and then generally when I'm shooting you know people that are shorter the, the best height to shoot is you want to be chest level because you don't want to be you know bird's eye view you don't want to be a worm's eye view with the tilt you kind of want to be chest level so that there isn't too much uh, distortion uh, especially when you get to wider lenses but anyways now instead of shooting like this I can go like this I can flip the LCD out like that and I just look down and then just watch and you know it doesn't hurt my back as much too and that's nice and then on the flip side you know Kay when she uses this she's a little shorter than me so when she uses this and needs to get um, obviously a, a top down shot she can just flip the screen and then look at it from uh, up top but I mean it's not a free form flip you can't flip it out and do selfies essentially all you can do is something like this you know just like this and like this and like this that's as far uh, down as it's gonna flip sometimes when you're straight on there's a lot of glare because especially if you're outside and wearing like a light shirt there's direct glare on this LCD screen and when you change the angle then the reflection is not as bad and makes it a little bit easier to see number eight is uh, having an actual microphone jack it's nice because the built-in mics on these cameras are always yeah they always suck you know so you want to add on an external mic if you want better quality and generally how we uh, oh babe can you throw me that mic okay okay so this is generally how we do this is our our microphone a little uh, easy portable mic you know I, I don't want to put like a big old road mic on it or anything I just want something small that I can just plug in no fuss because remember the reason why we're getting this camera is to keep it small and light and make it still feel like a, a casual camera essentially this is how we would shoot just like this but having that microphone jack is huge because not every camera has a microphone jack. Um, like I know that some of the A6000 does not. You have to, you know, uh, put in through another dongle or a hot shoe or something, you know. Number nine is the apps. You know, they, they kind of, the interface, they, they kind of made it kind of like a smartphone where you can download apps from the Sony store. They're, you know, some are free. The, the nice ones you have to pay for. Uh, which does suck that you you know you spend seventeen hundred dollars on this and you still have to pay you know ten bucks or you know whatever more for an app it should just be included but one of the apps that we wanted uh, was the time lapse app so that you know we can just set and forget it and it's pretty decent you know it you just tell it how long you want the time lapse to go you know you can change some parameters but um, after it's done you have the choice of you know creating the movie the actual movie together for you or just you know keeping the separate individual images and then you can you know do your own movie uh, in post-production at least you have that option uh, which is nice um, I just wish they didn't charge you for something like that so those are the pros and you think man that's a great camera huh you know there's so many pros and 
let's let's talk about the cons 